All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. When Adam and Eve disobeyed the Father, reality as they knew it immediately changed. They suddenly knew shame, and the die was cast, so to speak. They left the garden and were confronted with a harsh world where entropy withers everything, and all that is alive eventually dies. The spiritual, eternal world of heaven had separated from humanity, leaving us to deal with this carnal world made of flesh, rock, earth, blood, and bone. Death became a permanent fixture. Since Satan had decided to rebel against God, God, as he will, used the situation to further his will, making the fallen cherub a lord of this flesh-based earth, with all his fallen comrades, the one-third of the angels, tossed in here with them. The earth is become a testing ground. Think of it as a kind of school with a pass-fail grading system. We were even given a textbook to use during this exam, the Holy Bible. Of all the creatures in this carnal world, these other fallen angels have become evil principalities and powers that now inhabit a section of our reality that we humans cannot see but can feel the effects of. This is known as the second heaven. It is a multi-dimensional reality. First heaven is our reality here on earth. The third heaven is that higher dimension where the Father resides. And the second heaven is that land, that battleground that is in between. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, this unseen battle affects all of us every day. The Bible discusses these unseen powers and darkness in high places in Ephesians 6. These entities cannot be seen, but their influence manipulates us using our feelings and emotions and our thoughts against us. It's sort of like watching the wind blow through the leaves of a tree. The tree may be tossed around and bent by the wind, but we cannot see the wind itself. Yet we know through logic and reason and observation that the wind is there, a force of nature caused by weather cycles. The spiritual world will act much in the same way. Right now, this storm that we are all feeling on a deep psychological level manifesting now out here in the real world through the riots and the other things that are happening is all part of a hurricane of spiritual influence by forces that we cannot see. All of this time that we've been in this world, the lessons given to us in the Bible teach us that we need to make a choice. These powers that we cannot see will always seek to influence this choice that we have to make. We were, as human beings, given a conscience, a way to think and reason that elevates us above the animals as well as the human nature that's constantly at war with itself within our minds. You can call it light versus darkness, love versus hate, man versus beast, good versus evil. And mind you, none of this has anything to do with race. That is a manufactured battle. God created mankind in his image. We are all human with the same blood, the same faults and weaknesses. And we also have to understand that we're all sinners, every single one of us. Understand that even the best of us, no matter who we are, can in the right circumstances be capable of great evil. Most of the world's greatest evils were committed by do-gooders in the name of somebody who felt certain that they were right and that the ends justified the means. The choice that we all have to make is in choosing God through Jesus Christ. Or we can just give in to our inner darkness. But I pray that people don't do that because once you do give in to that inner darkness, you will be drawn so deep that there will be no coming back out. This is a season 
a season where the great delusion is upon humanity, the great delusion that is talked about in the Bible. Right now, far too many people are filled with pride. Pride is considered a good thing, however, the sin of pride was what got Satan cast out of heaven. So even people who profess to be Christians hate the idea of forgiveness and repentance. They loathe the very idea. And they will try to use the Bible to logic their way out of trying to give up, living a sinful lifestyle, or forgiving someone that they, they decided that they absolutely hate. They use the thief on the cross to justify their behavior, figuring, well, he didn't have time to repent. But if you think about it, he actually did. We don't know the full conversation that he had with Jesus while they were nailed to the cross. But the thief did repent and submit to Jesus in the matter of a split second. And that happened with a change of heart. As he asked Jesus to remember me when you go to paradise. And of course, Jesus did. This season that we find ourselves in is about repentance and submission. If you think about the random imagery that we've seen already in the first half of 2020, the lockdowns, basically being locked in your chambers, masks, masks of shame, the fear, fear of a virus. Some fear it even more than God, and others are using the virus as an excuse to oppress others in the name of health and safety. Freedom isn't possible without risk. So when you eliminate all risk, you're also eliminating your freedoms and rights. It appears that there is now a clear dividing line drawn between the children of darkness and the children of the day. And by saying this, I'm talking about those who have given in to their beast nature, their natural man, in living solely by their feelings and emotions. And then the children of the day, which is the ones that follow the truths as laid out in the Bible, the Ten Commandments, and the word. Everything that we thought that our country, in the United States anyway, that stood for is being maligned and torn down in favor of a new set of morals and ethics. They call it fighting the hierarchy. And while they may try to tell you that the hierarchy is a certain ethnic group of people, it's actually a rebellion against God. I call this new set of morals that's being imposed on us beast ethics. It's because people are giving in to the flesh, their beast nature. I believe that the mark of the beast will be willingly taken by people who have already given in to the beast nature. So, mankind loves living in the flesh. And even though, even we know when we're doing wrong to someone, especially when someone else isn't looking, we will justify it by blaming someone else, blaming the situation, Blaming our parents, blaming society, the system, or even blaming God himself. But we have to overcome this in order to reach a far greater destiny with God in heaven. This means having the will to take responsibility for our own actions, to do a fearless and searching moral inventory of ourselves, to both understand what the Bible is explaining to us about our own human nature, and how to overcome this instinct to give in to emotions, to anger, and other influence that act upon us. We need to know when to give our lives and our will over to God, rather than lean on our own understanding. Well, mankind has learned a lot of things about this natural world around us. We still know very little about the human mind. In fact, the majority of what we do know about our minds is that we can only influence others by using a few things, manipulating, people through emotions, inflicting mental or physical pain, and then the joy, love response. And this is all what's happening to us right now, except the love part is gone. We need to overcome the beast nature. We need to stop the impulse to react in anger or violence, and instead choose kindness, mercy, and love. It is far easier to hate someone than it is to love them. That happens because People don't bother to get to know anyone anymore. We can set aside hate if we let the Lord lead us. Love means to put the needs of someone else ahead of your own, to sacrifice for them, to love them enough to warn them that the way that they're living now is going to lead them to a much worse place than where you are today. Yes, hell is real. 
As the Bible says, Satan is roaring and seeking those whom he may devour, because he knows that the time is short. People are being divided like sheep and goats, and they're split based on this new versus old set of ethics. It is a form of anti-intellectualism, and people dismiss facts and data that is handed right to them, and they replace this with reactions based solely on emotion. That is the dairy definition of sociopathy. The Bible teaches mankind to seek God in the spiritual, finding the eternal home, which is where we truly belong. We will never go back to normal, no matter what the political parties promise. If you're hoping that a vote will bring you back to the way things were, you need to understand that's not going to happen. Prophecy from the Bible has moved forward. We are in a new paradigm. You may have noticed, if you believe in God, you may have noticed or picked up on how people in the beast mindset can sense that right away, without even talking to you, that you're not one of them. It's as almost they can read your mind. We know deep in our hearts and from precise biblical prophecy that no one man or political party is going to save this world. He can try his best, but that's works. You're not going to get to heaven through works. You're not going to save this nation through works. You're only going to save this nation if we have national repentance. So I pray to share the gospel and the repentance message. We don't have much longer. I believe that we will pass the Rubicon of any possible way of turning back after Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur that week of the 10 days of awe. So, if you're a believer that has had prophetic dreams or visions in the recent past, well, there were several thousand videos put up on YouTube and other places where just random people had left behind dreams that they were left behind. I believe that that was a spiritual warning to them, that they needed to get their lives in order. Because I believe the rapture is coming soon. A lot of people believe this. I'm not alone in that. If you have received a rapture dream lately between March of this year through this past July, August. The Holy Spirit is warning the dreamer to repent before they get left behind. Do a fearless and searching moral inventory of yourself. How have you been treating people, especially when no one else is looking? We are also to test these dreams and visions we hear because sometimes demonics, demonic attacks can happen, accusing us of things that we didn't even do. Jesus warned us specifically to watch out for false prophets teachings in these last days watch out don't believe everything you hear test it against the scripture we're there in the time of sorrows the ball is now rolling toward tribulation in my view the abraham accord is that quote unquote seven year covenant people can disagree with me on that that's fine but i believe that once all the nations sign on to it it will last for seven years since America is facilitating this agreement and it does split Jerusalem, I believe that that is a fulfillment of prophecy and that God is going to divide America in return. And that's why we are seeing this division that we are today. And that's it, plain and simple. This is the last call. I pray, talk to your family members. Get to know Jesus Christ in the Word. Seek the Father while he may still be found. We are running out of time. America and the Western world are falling under God's judgment. So, because we have not repented for a long list of things, as a nation, as a world, things will proceed forward, as Revelation talks about in the Bible. I pray that you talk to your family, share the gospel, and let them know what's coming. And I pray that you have a good day. Thank you for listening.